Right now, could a small local airport be contributing to unsafe air? We'll tell you what a recent study revealed. Plus, four weeks after the election, the final seat is decided in the United States Senate, a winner projected in the state of Georgia. And does Madison's Jefferson Middle School have a new name? We'll tell you what happened tonight as a local committee considered a name change for the school. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. First tonight, we do have breaking news from the Badger football program. Former interim head coach and defensive coordinator Jim Leonard is leaving the UW, tweeting tonight that he will stay on for the bowl game as defensive coordinator, but will part ways with the UW program at the end of the season after the bowl game. The former Badger star defensive back went on to a long NFL career before returning to coach at his alma mater seven years ago. He took over on an interim basis when Paul Christ was relieved of his duties earlier this year. Leonard guiding the Badgers to a 4-3 and three record before Luke Fickle was named head coach. The 40-year-old letter did not say anything in his tweet tonight about his future beyond the bowl game, but he is widely believed to have his pick of several coaching jobs on both the college and NFL levels. We'll have more on this news in sports. And more breaking news. Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock has defeated Republican challenger Herschel Walker in a runoff election in Georgia. The victory by the state's first black senator ensures Democrats an outright majority in the chamber for the rest of President Joe Biden's term. Warnock's win also solidifies Georgia's place as a deep south battleground state. Next tonight, we're used to hearing unleaded when we fill up our cars with gas, but small planes still use lead in their fuel, and it's the largest source of lead air contamination in Dane County. When it comes to the Middleton Municipal Airport, a recent study examining how it contributes to lead in the area is facing some criticism. Our Armand Rahman explains. Armand? Yeah, Dane County Public Health says, make no mistake, lead exposure can cause intellectual and behavioral problems and even hearing loss in children. They say most exposure in Dane County comes from paint chips and contaminated dust, but officials with the town of Middleton believe the municipal airport spreads more lead than what the study found. I give them a lot of credit for working with us, but they still haven't gone uh, the full distance. That's what Town of Middleton Board Chair Cynthia Richson thinks of a recent Dane County Public Health report, which found no evidence at this time Middleton Municipal Airport contributed to higher blood lead levels in area children. But airport officials say... The report, as I said, uh, pretty much speaks for itself. We have always done our best to be good neighbors, uh, consistent with safety and operations at this airport. According to the study, Middleton Airport contributes about 32% of the county's lead emissions. Air lead levels near the airport, while higher, were lower than the 2016 EPA standard. The county admits its data is limited because right now, only kids meeting certain criteria get tested for lead. And more study may be needed. Richton says studies done by Trinity consultants show the airport was the dominant source of ambient lead in the area. We did modeling. They can look at the maps. It shows where the lead is falling and it confirmed the presence of this lead being at ground level because they fly so low and we're breathing it. Airport manager Richard Morey says he recognizes this and within months they will receive 94 octane unleaded fuel for lower compression aircraft. A survey of the uh, owners, I believe about 60% would be able to operate, including some of my flight school aircraft. But Richen says that's not enough and the airport should move quicker to switch to the unleaded fuel approved for more engines back in September. I talked to GAMI several times and if the city of Middleton would also work in cooperation with Dane County Regional Wisconsin Aviation, uh, we could potentially be the third on the delivery list sometime likely in the first half of 2023. Maury says while the airport commission is working on that, it'll take more time for enough of the new fuel to be tested and put into circulation. As much as I'd love to be running unleaded right now, we simply have to wait until it's available. And while the airport is located in the town of Middleton, it is owned by the city of Middleton. In an email, City Administrator Brian Gatto tells me they take the transition to unleaded fuel seriously and are working to determine how to get the new 100-octane unleaded fuel as soon as it's commercially available. Armand, thank you. Well, check this out. TSA officials say a dog was accidentally sent through an x-ray scanner this week at Dane County Regional Airport. Pictures shared by TSA on Twitter appear to show the dog was placed in a backpack that went through a scanner. Officials say when traveling with a pet, it's best to notify your airline ahead of time and remove pets from all bags or carriers before going through security. 
it looked like a backpack. So they kind of put the bag face down in the bin. Um, so our officers did not know there was an animal inside and they sent the whole thing through. Um, and then of course our officers are looking at the x-ray images. They see a dog on the screen and they, and they say, wait a minute, this isn't right. So they, they got the passenger, they connected them and um, they talked to her and educated her. And they offer some helpful reminders when traveling with your pet. Airports can be a little frightening for animals. They say it's best to keep them on a leash or harness. Bring a travel carrier, of course, and stay by your pet while you're in the airport, even if you're going to the vending machine or restroom, and use the pet relief area before getting in line to board. And let's get a look at our first worn forecast now. Here's Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Well, after having some rain and snow for much of the day today, at least here in the Madison and Dane County area, now we're starting to see some fog. The uh, time lapse from the WIC TV Sky Cam shows clouds and those snow and rain showers off and on through the day. You can see the ground kind of whighten up underneath there. But as we take a look at uh, Doppler track or fir first visibility, uh, you can see that how it's down to a quarter mile visibility in Madison, half mile in Watertown, a quarter mile in Juneau and Dodge County. It's that band right from about Platteville to Madison to uh, just north of Milwaukee that's seeing the, the thickest fog right now. Dense fog advisory now in effect until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning for most of south central and southeastern Wisconsin away from Lake Michigan. Doppler track right now uh, shows the snow and rain showers from earlier off to the east of us. High temperatures today just above freezing. So as the snow ended, it started to melt a little bit. That added some moisture to the air. And now temperatures are right around freezing. So not only do you have the fog, but roads could become slippery in areas where temperatures drop below freezing freezing and that moisture condenses on the road. Here in Dane County, everybody's right around the freezing mark. Still 34 in Edgerton, but it's 32 in Middleton, 32 in Wanakee, and 32 degrees in uh, Sun Prairie. And we have an alert day in the forecast for Thursday night and Friday for a round of slushy snow that could bring one to four inches of accumulation through much of the southern part of the state. So look for a low tonight of about 26. Again, areas of fog. Some of that could be locally dense. Tomorrow should be a milder day, but again, we have that snow chance on uh, Thursday night and Friday. And then another system next week. I'll tell you more about that and weather in just a few minutes. Gary, thank you. New tonight, bond conditions have been set for the Wisconsin woman charged with amputating a nursing home patient's foot without permission. 38-year-old Mary Brown of Duran made an initial court appearance today. Her bond was set at $150,000, according to records. A 62-year-old man was admitted to a Spring Valley nursing home in March with severe frostbite on his feet. Brown allegedly cut off one of his feet in May without the man's permission and without a doctor's order. Election officials in Wisconsin got federal subpoenas today. It's all part of a national investigation into the January 6th attacks on the U.S. Capitol. Those officials include the county clerk here in Dane County. Political reporter Will Keneally spoke with him today. Even though Wisconsin did not see any of the action that took place in D.C., investigators still want to look at the books of two Wisconsin counties to see what role they might have played in the run-up to January 6th. Just any communications I'd have with any of them, either you know, by text or email or whatever. Those are the kind of documents federal investigators are looking for. Any communication from a series of officials tied to the Trump 2020 campaign to the Dane County clerk. Really, the very little came from that other than there are the transcripts of the recount. So one of the names on there, Jim Troopas. That search only flagged one result, Dane County Attorney Jim Troopas. He worked on behalf of the Trump campaign in Wisconsin, helping them file for a recount. Some of the other things, he worked on the recount here in Dane County and, and Milwaukee. So I had a fair amount of interaction with him during that. So those transcripts, we are part of what we are sending over today. Troopas made transcripts of those conversations, which McDonald took on as a public county record. McDonald sent those to investigators ahead of Friday's deadline. The Milwaukee County Clerk was subpoenaed as well and had similar interactions with Troopas. Nuts and bolts conversations about the recount. A lot of it was pretty mundane, but, but, but there were several efforts to exclude tens of thousands of votes of Dane County voters. You can kind of see how they were working backwards. We need... You know, we need 20,000 votes, so let's try to toss out that many from Dane and Milwaukee. So the U.S. DOJ filed similar subpoenas with local officials in other states, including Michigan and Arizona. Reporting from Madison, Will Keneally, News 3 Now. Nearly two years now after the U.S. Capitol attack, congressional leaders honored the heroism of law enforcement officers on that day. During a ceremony, the U.S. Capitol Police Department and the D.C. Metro Police received congressional gold medals for their response. It's the highest honor that Congress can award. And meanwhile, the House Committee investigating the Capitol attack will be making criminal referrals to the Justice Department. The committee's chair, Democratic Congressman Benny Thompson, announced the decision today. Thompson said the panel has not narrowed down the, quote, universe of individuals who may be referred.
A Manhattan jury has found two Trump Organization companies guilty on multiple charges of criminal tax fraud and falsifying business records connected to a 15-year scheme to defraud tax authorities. The former president and his family were not charged in this case. The Trump Organization could face a maximum of $1.61 million in fines when sentenced in mid-January. Republican Wisconsin representatives in Congress now calling on Governor Tony Evers to delete the video platform TikTok from all state government Device, devices, calling it a national security threat. Now that issue has gained increasing traction in conservative circles. Over the past couple weeks, the Republican governors of South Carolina and South Dakota banned that app from being installed on state-owned devices. And Governor Evers today ordering flags to be flown at half-staff tomorrow, of course, in honor of National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. Each December 7th, the state and country has a whole, as a whole recognized Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day to honor the 2,403 lives lost. That includes 54 service members from Wisconsin, the order will be in effect from sunrise to sunset. The suspect accused of killing five people at a Colorado Springs LGBTQ nightclub has been charged with 305 counts, including first degree murder. 22 year old Anderson Lee Aldrich was in court today. He also faces charges of attempted murder, assault and bias motivated crimes in the November 19th shooting. In addition to the five killed, at least 19 others were injured. The University of Virginia awarded posthumous degrees to three football players who were killed in a shooting last month, including former Badger Devin Chandler. Chandler spent two seasons with the Badgers before transferring to Virginia. Virginia. A former UVA football player was arrested and charged in connection with that shooting. Jefferson Middle School will soon have a new name. As we've reported, a committee formed last spring to rename the school, a decision that came after administration suggested a rebrand was in order, given Thomas Jefferson, whom it's currently named for, is known to have owned slaves. And tonight, committee members met for the final time to rank their top pick out of four finalists. But as McKenna Alexander explains, despite that meeting, Jefferson Middle School's new name remains a mystery, McKenna. Yeah, the committee meeting tonight was scheduled to end with a decision on Jefferson Middle School's new name, which ultimately didn't happen. The previously announced finalists for the school's new name are Eston Hemmings Jefferson, Sally Hemmings, Ezekiel Gillespie, and Maya Angelou. Committee members were expected to rank those four finalists tonight and present them to the school board for final approval, but instead decided to alphabetize the list and let the school board select the name that we've already done the four and maybe alphabetical will kind of get rid of the we'll make it we'll make more anonymity between the choices so we're not having to put a ranking on anything and truly give them a clean slate to go off of now just a series of meetings and public comment sessions will continue into the new year which means tonight jefferson middle school's new name is still unknown Still ahead at 10, an alert day this week. Gary Canalti will have his full forecast. But first, tis the season at the state capitol officially lighting up the holiday tree. Stay with us. to thank our sponsor, Liberty Mutual. They customize your car insurance, so you only pay for what you need. Contestants ready? Go! Oh, no, 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 no. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. With dad's arthritis, he needs extra help around the house. So I called a grace. Yes, a grace. With their agent home service, he can stay at home. home. That's where I want to spend these months. <laughs> with hospice care from a grace, I can stay home with my dog and my grandkids and their laughter. I had no <laughs> idea laughter could be a part of my life again after Joe died. But through a grace, I found hope and healing. A grace, caring every step of the way. Sometimes a cough isn't just a cough, so it's better to be prepared. Keeping Binax now handy makes it easy to test. And self-test kits may be reimbursable with no copay through your health plan. With Binax now, you'll have reliable results in 15 minutes with the self-test that features the same technology doctors use and detects multiple variants, including Omicron BA5. So you can always be prepared with Binax now, the number one COVID-19 self-test in the U.S. Wisconsin, one of those places where families spend their winters among our frozen lakes and snow-covered hills. With all the fun we're having, it's easy to take for granted how we warm up, by the fire or simply adjusting our thermostat. But what if you couldn't warm up so easily? It might be simple to imagine for 60 seconds, but for many, it's a reality they can't ignore. Working families, elderly, disabled, and veterans 
struggling to keep their heat and power on in the dangerous cold of winter. Freezing temperatures aren't just uncomfortable for them. They can be deadly. Make a real difference by providing a hand up for a neighbor in need. No matter the amount, every dollar helps. If you or someone you know needs a hand up, our energy, water, and emergency rental assistance providers are working together to keep you safe in your home. No one deserves to suffer when we can help each other. Do you have an idea for an invention, but you don't know what to do next? Call InventHelp. They've been helping inventors for 35 years. Call today for free information. Call 800-550-5543. Tis the season to celebrate with two full days of holiday giveaways. I want to bring out Mama Hood's Holiday Helper. So excited. Plus, Don Cheadle joins the festivities. On the next Jennifer Hudson Show at 3. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Welcome back to Capitol Rotunda. Now lit up for the season. Governor Evers and Lieutenant Governor-elect Sarah Rodriguez flipping the metaphorical switch this afternoon. Crews started setting up the tree last month. It features ornaments made by students from across the state with a theme, Wisconsin Waters. The tree will be on display through the end of the year. Rutabaga Paddle Sports has a new home in Fitchburg. The business cut the ribbon on its new location today. Rutabaga broke ground on the site earlier this year in hopes of building its own unique space. Now that hope has become a reality. The business features a pond right outside and is located just down the road from Nine Springs Creek, giving customers a chance to use their new gear almost immediately after purchase. Madison's Common Council is considering a proposal to replace a state street parking ramp with a new high-rise apartment building. The project would tear down the 60-year-old Lake Street side of the state street parking ramp. In its place, the city is proposing a new 13-story building, half public parking and half student housing. The first six floors would offer around 400 public parking spaces. Above that, a student apartment complex with more than 200 units. The building would also include an intercity bus terminal, something downtown Madison doesn't currently have. Unfortunately, it's, it's been many years since we've had uh, a facility uh, for those buses to use and for passengers as they're getting on and off the bus to have a place to to do so that's out of the, the weather, you know, out of the snow, out of the rain. The Common Council will vote on whether to approve the proposal. If it passes, the Plan Commission and the Common Council will need to approve rezoning the area before the project can even get started. An alert day in the forecast. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti tells us what's coming and when in his certified most accurate forecast. Gary? Yeah, that's for the next round of snow. It'll be Thursday night and Friday, but tonight we're dealing with fog, and part of that is because of the snow that we had earlier. You can see the band of snow that mainly occurred on grassy areas from northeastern Iowa through south central Wisconsin right through the Madison area and then to just north of Milwaukee. South of there it was too warm for snow, mainly rain. North of there there wasn't any precipitation even though it was cold enough for snow but temperatures were right around freezing or just a little bit above and as the snow ended there was time for the snow to melt a little bit before temperatures started to drop and now the problem is we've got dense fog. Visibility quarter of a mile in Madison, quarter of a mile in Watertown, zero in Juneau and central Dodge County. So it's basically this band right where that snow was that we were dealing with dense fog and some of that may expand north and south a bit so the National Weather Service has issued a dense fog advisory until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning for most of south central and southeastern Wisconsin away from Lake Michigan where temperatures will be a little bit warmer and we won't see as much fog at least in that area but that band of rain and snow showers has scooted off to the east out to the west not much going on lots of clouds but we probably will see at least a little bit of sunshine tomorrow afternoon which would be nice but as we head into Thursday here comes the next weather system this is 6 p.m. Thursday and this is, looks like the very latest computer model forecast showing maybe a little more snow on the northern edge of that precipitation as it lifts northward into Wisconsin. This is a change. I mean, literally, I'm seeing this for the first time. If this is the case, we might end up with a little bit more snow than forecast because we were initially expecting rain that would change over to snow sometime mid to late evening and then mainly snow overnight. If we see more in the way of snow with an earlier changeover, that could lead to slightly higher snowfall amounts. However, as the whole system kind of pulls on through, the back edge moves 
pretty quickly so that by noon you can see the snow starting to clear Madison and then we'll be just left with some flurries in the afternoon. So my original thinking was about one to three inches of snow south of Madison, three uh, locally four inches north of Madison with the heavier amounts across central Wisconsin. If this very latest computer model forecast is correct, we might be a little more toward the higher ends, maybe two to three inches south of Madison and maybe three to five inches north of Madison. Let's we'll see how that actually plays out because the temperatures will be critical. A couple degrees warmer and we're back to a rain snow mix with not much in the way of accumulation until it gets colder later on at night. So the alert day in the forecast for at least the potential for one to four inches of slushy snow, no matter what you look at, it's going to be a slushy wet snow and if you have to shovel, it'll be a sticky snow and kind of hard to lift. So keep that in mind. But again, the heavier amounts probably favoring areas north of Madison. As we look at the forecast, we do have that dense fog advisory overnight until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning for much of south central Wisconsin. Look for a high temperature tomorrow of 40 degrees once we get some sunshine and the fog lifts after the morning. Planning your day for tomorrow, 40 for high in Madison, 40 in Middleton. Temperatures mainly mid-30s to around 40 degrees. Across the rest of southern Wisconsin, upper 30s to around 40 degrees in most of the major reporting stations. Again, future track, very new information, mainly snow now with temperatures perhaps uh, staying more in the uh, uh, lower 30s. If it stays a little colder, that will keep precipitation more in the way of snow before everything moves on out, and that could lead to slightly higher snow totals than we have here, but generally about a one to four inch snowfall is what we're looking at. Temperatures warm up for the weekend. The next system next week now looks like it'll be mainly rain, changing to a little bit of snow, maybe some minor accumulations on Tuesday night, and then relatively cold but quiet for the end of next week. And coming up in sports, we're going to dive into our top story tonight. Jim Leonard leaving Wisconsin football after the season ends, so stay with us. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. It's a fact. Two out of three Americans who qualify for Medicare do not receive all the benefits they deserve. You could be missing out. Now, Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield introduces a free Medicare plan checkup to make sure you receive all the benefits you qualify for in 2023. Call 1-855-597-0884 today and receive extra benefits for a $0 monthly premium. Benefits like dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drugs. And to help you stay healthy at home, you can have free prescription drug delivery, online doctor visits 24-7, and free exercise classes. You can even receive money towards over-the-counter health items. Call 1-855-597-0884 today and feel confident you have all the benefits you deserve for 2023. You can receive extra benefits for a $0 monthly premium, like dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drugs. Call 1-855-597-0884 and make sure you're not missing out. Ready, Dad? All charged up. This holiday season, Ford wants to help you shine bright with a special offer on select Ford vehicles. Choose a vehicle in stock or simply place a custom order lock in your rate and you're protected even if rates go up before your order comes in so much and that's how ford is helping you, I'm proud of you kids. shine bright <laughs> this season choose flex buy on a 2022 escape or edge suv and get zero percent financing for 66 months at your local ford dealer and shine bright your business is made from your dna your blood your sweat your tears from a gleam in your eye, you gave it what it needed to grow into the pride and joy it has become. You wouldn't dream of letting anything bad happen to it, so you lavish it with love and wrap it in the cozy warmth of the silver lining. Pamper your business with a policy from West Bend. Planning a remodel? Don't toss your cabinets, furniture, and appliances. Donate to Habitat Restore. Your items stay out of landfills while proceeds create housing solutions for hardworking families. Build a stronger community with Habitat Restore of Dane County. Cheers. Cheers. To your big promotion. Thanks. And to your new house. I know. What? I guess you had to move fast in this market. Right? Best thing I did was get a pre-approval from Summit. Once I knew my budget, I only looked at homes I could make a serious offer on. And how's construction going on your place? One month left. Must be stressful. Actually, no. I'm working with Summit, too, and they've been great about answering all my questions and guiding me along. It's been easy. Whether you're building or buying a home, Summit Credit Union is here to help. News 3 Now's call for action team gets results. 
We're taking action for you. Nearly 700 cases closed, more than a half million dollars recovered, and we're not finished yet. When you need help, call for action only on News 3 Now. Anticipation as to what Jim Leonard would decide to do after Luke Fickle was named Wisconsin's head football coach. Leonard announced on Twitter just an hour ago that he will be leaving the program after the season ends. In his post, he says, It has meant the world to me to be able to pour my heart and soul into the UW football program over the last seven years. After discussions with my family and Coach Fickle, I will remain D.C. through the bowl game, but no longer be a part of the staff after the conclusion of the 2022 season. Leonard went on to say, It's been an honor to coach these young men, adding a thank you to all the fans for their support. The team is set to play in the guaranteed rate bowl game on December 27th against Oklahoma State. Badger men's basketball coming off another gritty win over the weekend edging in-state rival Marquette in overtime. Now it's time to bring that fight into Big Ten play as the team returns home to face 13th ranked and undefeated Maryland. Greg Gard doing his best Dick Bennett impression with the red sweater vest in celebration of 125 years of UW hoops. Well, the Badgers got off to a good start. Tyler Wall takes it to the cup for two to give Wisconsin an early lead and that lead would grow. Later in the first, Connor Asijan comes up with the loose ball and finds Jordan Davis who dials one up from deep to put the Badgers up by 10. Davis had seven first half points and Stephen Crowell was doing his thing. Working down low, the Badgers get it to him in the paint. He cashes in eight points in the first 20 for Crowell and it ends up being a close second half with the Badgers protect home and they upset the Terps 64 to 59. Well, Badger Nation can breathe a sigh of relief. Braylon Allen is staying put in Madison. The sophomore running back tweeting out an update that he is a Wisconsin Badger. So there you have it. But the program did have three more players enter the transfer portal. Isaac Garendo is one of them. He's coming off his best season at UW. He played in every game, had almost 400 yards on the ground with five scores. Also entering the portal are Jalen Franklin and Samara Melvin. Nominations are out for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award, and the Packers are nominating Aaron Jones. This annual honor recognizes a player for the work they do both on and off the field. While Jones tears it up out on the field, he's also a staple in the community. He's the Pack's salute to service spokesperson. He created an organization with his twin brother, the A&A All the Way Foundation, that helps children in need while also contributing to the Yards for Shoes campaign. The honors just keep rolling in for Wisconsin Volleyball. The Big Ten Coach of the Year, Kelly Sheffield, has been named the AVCA Northeast Regional Coach of the Year. He's also a finalist for the Association's National Coach of the Year. And four players are being recognized as well. Sarah Franklin, Danielle Hart, Devin Robinson, and Ulia Orgel have all been named to the AVCA All-Region Team. The Badgers are getting ready for the regional semifinal matchup with Penn State. That's on Thursday, and it's going to begin 30 minutes after Florida and Pittsburgh finish up. They're set to begin at 2.30. We'll be right back. At the Volkswagen Sign Then Drive event, you can make maintenance cost worries so last year. Hurry in to lease a new 2023 Tiguan for zero down, zero deposit, zero first month's payment, and zero due at signing. Limited inventory available. The insurance company wants to give you a tiny check for an injury that costs you plenty. Are they playing games with your future? You do not deserve to be taken advantage of. Put a powerful law firm on your side, one the insurance companies have dealt with before. I called Hupie and Abraham. Not only did they get me what I deserved, they got me a lot more. When you're injured, demand every dollar. Tell the insurance company, you mean business. Call 800-800-5678. Hupie and Abraham, right now. You can get any phone you want. Any one I want? Any phone you want. is the greatest gift of all. At U.S. Cellular, we're offering any phone free for new and current customers, plus $100 to spend on accessories. Waiting sometimes is just inevitable. But if you're over 50 or live with a chronic condition, waiting could be deadly because conditions like heart disease or diabetes raise your risk of serious illness or death from untreated COVID. And if you don't get treatment within days, you may not be able to get treatment. So... 
got COVID symptoms? Get tested and get treated right away. It can't wait. I've got a secret. I did all of my holiday shopping in one place. Do you want to know where? At the Bruce Company in Middleton. I found Bagalini purses for mom, Frasier fur candles, my sister's favorite, earrings for me, even Weber grill accessories for dad. And their holiday showroom, it's a wonderland. So this season, check out the Bruce Company, my holiday happy place. Are you waking up in the morning with a sore jaw, headaches, maybe even ringing in your ears, all because you're grinding and clenching your teeth at night? That's exactly what was going on with me. That's when I found this, the Brux Night Guard. Now the Brux Night Guard redirects the bite force away from the back teeth, reducing jaw pain while still protecting the teeth. This unique design is what makes Brux Night Guard different from all other traditional grind guards. Go to BruxNightGuard.com and order yours today. At the Volkswagen Sign Then Drive event, you can make maintenance cost worries so last year. Hurry in to lease a new 2023 Tiguan for zero down, zero deposit, zero first month's payment, and zero do it signing. Limited inventory available. This portion of News 3 Now is sponsored by RG Heating and Air Conditioning. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Finally tonight, the lethargy many of us felt during the pandemic has inspired the Oxford Word of the Year for 2022, Goblin Mode. So Oxford University Press says Goblin Mode is when you're, quote, unapologetically self-indulgent, lazy, slovenly, or greedy, typically in a way that rejects social norms or expectations. So it's basically the opposite of trying to better yourself. This is the first year the Oxford Word of the Year was chosen by the public. Take that to heart. Gary and I were all goblin mode well before <laughs> oh the pandemic. Right. Before, before it was even a word. <laughs> well, here's here's a game. Let's uh, let's find the capital. There it is. <gasps> oh, that's how thick wow. the fog is out there. Um, dense fog advisory in effect for all of South Central Wisconsin, including Madison, through 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Visibility at the airport a quarter of a mile, but downtown it's even less than that. Zero visibility in Juneau. Quarter mile visibility in Watertown. And temperatures are right around freezing, so it could be slick out there. Where where the moisture condenses on the pavement. Well, be careful if you're traveling. Thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 10. And do something good, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.